When we talk about data privacy, let's try to step back a little and ask a question. Exactly what kind of information when added up together would represent you as an individual? For instance, your legal name, your place of birth, um, your political view, even the way how you look like. These are just the tip of an iceberg. There's a myriad of data that could represent you as an individual. However, today we are not talking about the possibility of understanding between one person to another. But we are just talking about the possibility of a person not being wanted to be understood. Sometimes this will be understood as like the two sides of a con. We will come back to this later. When you are young, you probably have written and received love letters from your little lover, right? And imagine that these love letters were read by your uh, worrying mom or by your bossy friend. You'd probably be very annoyed and outraged and went, hey, you are intruding my privacy. And then you probably will be waving your love letters and say, these are privacy. But what exactly is privacy? Privacy is the right to be let alone. Actually, back in 1890, Samuel Warren and Louis Brandeis wrote an article at Harvard Law Review titled The Right to Have Privacy to discuss about the concept of privacy and they talk about the possibility of a celebrity not wanting to have reports about them being published. And this article was precisely written against this background. The authors actually want to analyze what constitutes as the right to privacy and they would like to also to see to what extent that a celebrity may prevent reports about them from being published. Intrusion to privacy is an act to intrusion. It could intrude your property, it could intrude your right to maintain your privacy, it could even intrude your right as a human being. If you want to prevent a person from being called you as an intruder of privacy, that person will probably have to first obtain your consent. This is manifested under Article of Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which goes, no one shall be subject to arbitrary interference with his privacy, family, home or correspondence, nor to attacks upon his honor and reputation. Everyone has the right to the protection of law against such interference or attacks. In different jurisdictions, uh, different countries have their own versions of uh, privacy. For, for instance, in Germany, um, they, they would use the term that's called Persönlichkeitsrecht or Informationales Selbstbestimmungsrecht as legal concept to um, describe the related behavior of individuals. But then I would guess like we will all agree that actually countries in most in the most part of the world will actually respect the right to privacy. We'll come back to the contemporary society. When we talk about data privacy, it's not just about protecting your own personal um, stories or your creative content, but it's more broad, so to speak. So when we talk about data privacy, it's basically about um, all of this record, which evidences um, your survival as a whole, basically. And that's how we call data privacy. This is actually a very brand new concept. If we come to think a little deeper about it, actually all of your actions actually performed have been meticulously recorded in an unprecedented manner. How would that be, you may probably ask. So probably they could come from your mobile phone, they could come from your computer, or they could come from, for example, like CCTV footage on every venue that you have visited. Obviously, this uh, data would be very important to the enterprises, but it may not be as important to individuals like you and me. And why is that? I would imagine the reasons are slightly like twofold. Uh, firstly, is that um, individuals do not usually think that we are like celebrities. We don't think our data are important enough to be recorded. And secondly, is basically because when we visit a website and the website asks for our consent, we would basically just click yes, I agree, instead of going through all of the terms and conditions, right? And actually, when we come to think deeper about it, we will think that data is actually feels slightly distant because of its abstractness, right? But then um, try to imagine that um, somebody or even say like a company knows the venues that you usually visited and they know when you wake up and they even read the conversation between you and your friends. Now, you will probably feel pretty frightened, right? But in fact, a lot of us just simply surrender our data just like that. Isn't this surprising? And they are not even anonymized data. So as a whole, so to speak, that you as a person actually equals to the total sum of this data and each data chunk will be equal to basically just one part of you.
of an identity, so to speak. And what is even more interesting, in fact, is that behind this data, there's a logic behind it. So like these data record your behavior. And why is that? Because they would like to be able to predict your future behavior. And once they are able to predict your future behavior, they will be able to perhaps induce you to change your behavior. This will be of monetary or lucrative value to uh, private companies. But then what about when they fall under the hands of the government? Take China as an example. Many Chinese cities have implemented social credit score system. Every action you perform will be recorded and the score will be generated. How would that affect you as an individual? For instance, if you want to borrow a loan from a bank, this score will affect the interest rate that you receive. And this score will actually serve as an indicator if you want to have a career promotion in your workplace. And it will also affect your civil rights. For instance, say like whether you will be entitled to a government, certain government subsidies or whether you will be able to purchase a train or even flight ticket. The upsides will be the law and order in the society will generally improve. The government will be more readily able to control its citizens. And so like the policy that the government would like to implement will be more thoroughly implemented countrywide. The downside, of course, which we can all imagine basically is that the freedom of a person being let alone will be forsaken. While the situation in China may seem slightly dim, when we turn to the global development in terms of data protection law, we will realize that actually it's actually not so bad because there has been a lot of legislation in terms of data protection law have been implemented worldwide. From European Union's general data protection regulation to United States California Consumer Privacy Act to even China's cyber security law, you will notice that there has been a lot of drastic changes happening across different continents. And you would ask probably why would there be a lot of data protection law coming into place? And the reason precisely, which you can all imagine, basically is that the companies who owns the big data and who owns this IT technology, they would be able to be more readily exploit the data and to be able to predict the behavior of the millions of people worldwide. You may probably ask what will an average person be entitled to get under data protection law. Here I will digress a little. Let's talk about food safety. When we talk about food safety, I'm a lay person. I would expect the food that I eat would make me healthy. However, sometimes I will also get confused. Why would the food that seemed harmless a few years ago would suddenly be classified as substandard? I will try to justify it this way. Human civilization is a process of accumulation. Studies will relentlessly generate novel results. Therefore, the standards towards food safety will be changed constantly. And therefore, it will naturally be very annoying to the food manufacturers. However, to laypersons like you and me, we will probably happily accept this as positive development. Data protection also functions this way. Privacy by itself is already a complex concept, but when we add a little element like data privacy or even its protection, when added up together, it could get pretty tangled up. But the main point is, you know you are entitled to this right. This is a very important step. After knowing this, then you will be able to be more readily fight for this right because you already have the awareness of this digital right. The landscape of data privacy will keep changing. By now, we should already know that a couple of rights that are available for us to use in terms of digital rights. For example, the right to be forgotten which is also known as the right to erasure. Also, there's a right to portability, which essentially means that an individual can use their own data for their own purposes across different service provider. We also have this concept, which is called representation of data subjects, which essentially allows nonprofit organizations to defend your digital rights. These rights shape the foundation for the privacy rights in contemporary society. Privacy is a human right, and so does data privacy. So next time when a website wants to ask for your consent, try to understand what exactly it wants to collect from you because that's your right.